Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, let's just take a look at OpenAI's new codex, which is a new program, a new API, or a new service, which you can now join for waitlist. And the interesting part about this is this is some insane level AI, which actually literally can generate a game by just you telling it what it needs to do in English. And this is it, this is the future, it is here. And this person who creates this game does not write any single line of code in this video. Let's just go ahead and take a look at what this is and how this works. All right, so if we go on this website, we're gonna see that OpenAI Codex is basically the extension of GitHub Copilot. You can see Codex is a model that powers GitHub Copilot and we have seen GitHub Copilot, what it does, what it can do and how it works in some video, I think a couple of weeks ago. And it's powerful. GitHub Copilot is super powerful, but Codex is another level. Codex can do some interesting stuff with natural language. Natural language is basically like talking in English. So I tell you, hey, go ahead and create a game. And maybe a future AI, not this one, but a future AI might just do it without actually you doing anything at all. So what these guys did is that they released a video. They released actually a bunch of videos, but the first one is super interesting to me because if we go ahead and watch this video, what you're gonna see is we start with a simple, I don't know, it looks like Grammarly interface, but it's, it's just a canvas. And this is the place where you write your commands in English. And on the right would be the place where the code would be generated. Now if we play this, you can see it starts with an add this image of a rocket ship and gives it a URL. As simple as that. And the moment we hit play or, you know, we hit enter on that, it creates a JavaScript code on the right. So it's a JavaScript based game and it's using war, right? So probably the model isn't trained on ES6 yet, but yeah, that doesn't matter we won't be laughing when our jobs are gone. So <laughs> it's no it's no place to laugh. But anyway, uh, we start with a very simple thing, add this image of a rocket ship, where you might think, I mean, because Codex also works on GPT-3, which is like processing natural language. So it's relatively, you might think, okay, it's fine. I mean, you know, just taking out the intent from the sentence and creating a small code, which is fine. What truly is exciting is that it is also able to store the contextual information of whatever it has done so far. So you can see, we just start writing continuous English sentences, just like you would probably instruct a freelancer or a programmer or your friend, like how it should work. So make it be smallish, you know, a little smallish, crop it circular, stuff like this. So if you continue watching this, you will see that it keeps on generating this stuff. And the interesting part happens when you actually just give it some complicated things like animate the rocket ship or introduce an enemy steroid things like these when the rocket is clicked temporarily display some text saying firing thrusters in white and location and temporarily speed up whatever it is you know 4x 2.4x and stuff so the moment you write the sentence and let's see the moment you write the sentence and play it you can see the amount of code which it orders, which is which it is automatically generating is insane, right? It is able to understand that some text in white on the current location, this part of the text, which is absolute positioning and you know, just, just making sure the text appears on the same part where the cursor is clicked. This is insane stuff, right? This is something which I don't know, like <laughs> scares me. <laughs> that if an AI is able to understand this stuff, then it's it's something. Something is happening, right? We just wrote it this, wrote like a sentence like this, which is not super clear. It's not like a coding program which just has a single meaning. It could have multiple meaning, current location, it just should not know what the current location is of the image, of the cursor, how it's happening. But it is able to interpret that intent, which is super interesting and super weird, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's super interesting to see what this does. But if you keep on continuing this, you can see these guys actually just keep on building. So they add an astronaut, they add a, I don't know, they, they just keep on building the program. They add a scorecard, they add an end game kind of thing, incrementing the score by one point every set duration and so on. So you can see, I mean, this guy just created a game literally by just typing in English and the code on the JavaScript, the code on the right, basically just output it. And it might not be the best and the cleanest code, but it works, right? And I mean, for simple games, if we are able to just tell the AI what needs to be done and it works fine, 
And I think it's, it's, it's a great progress because now you can create a bunch of platformer games all by yourself, all for yourself without even learning how to program. And I don't think this has been done before in terms of, I mean, I'm not really talking about the drag drop things because they are fundamentally limiting. This is not limiting, right? You can pretty much say it to change the image of Asteroid to something else after three seconds or after the first crash or first clash or whatever and the AI would literally do this this model I'm, I believe that this would do that so yeah this is awesome now the the big question is that I mean we also visited this in the github copilot video but the big question is that should you be worried as a developer of uh, you know progress like this being made in the AI and the by the open AI company and the answer is maybe a little. Why? Because I'll tell you what this AI or what this software is not doing correctly or not doing perfectly is that this AI cannot break a huge problem into smaller, clear problems. Because if you see right now, our objective in this one was to create a space game. Now, if you are somebody, you might have imagined what a space game would look like. An astronaut, uh, astronaut, astronaut, but an asteroid, a space, whatever you call it, space shuttle, and you just have to avoid, or maybe you thought about like shooting those, you know, retro type themed games, but you could think about it and you could probably just start breaking it down into smaller sub problems as well. This AI cannot do it yet. I mean, at this point, I just want to add yet to everything because yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's not possible. It, it's possible that it could do it in next five, 10 years, but it cannot do it yet. You can see till some extent, you do have to provide more or less clear cut instructions to what needs to be done, right? And at every single step as a programmer, your duty is to break down that logic even further so that it makes more sense for this GPT-3 model in order to understand what's, you know, what's what it needs to do. So again, to answer the question, should you be afraid? Yes, you should be afraid if you are one of those developers who don't understand the logic behind things and just focus more on the copying pasting part and don't really understand how things are fundamentally working or fundamentally built. Because these sort of AIs can only be operated by developers who know how to logically build an explanation from bottom to top, right? And if you're somebody who avoids that, then it's a very good time to actually become a developer who is able to think logically as well and able to break down a real world web application or any other real world pro problem into smaller subsets of problems. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Let me know what you think about this open AI codex. Are you afraid? Are you not afraid? Are you going to change your field of work <laughs> from web development to AI or any anything else? Like, let me know what you're thinking. And if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. That is all for this one. I'm going to see you in the next video really soon.